Hi. Um, I was one of the first students who set up the Bristol Innocence Project, and it was the first innocence project in the country, and it was four years ago. Right now, I actually, as my, Michael mentioned, I work for the Innocence Network UK. I administrate the database and allocate cases to member innocence projects, and I also decide on the eligibility of cases. So as Michael mentioned, there are different reasons why a prisoner may, ma may be maintaining innocence when he or she isn't. So my job basically is to ensure that the cases that we allocate to our member innocence projects are cases where prisoners are actually claiming to be factually innocent. Now I'll say a little bit about why I joined the Innocence Project. I think I had, I think it was because I had an interest in criminal law, but it wasn't so much because I had an aspiration to be a lawyer or a criminal or any, <laughs> or any academic fascination with the phenomenon of crime itself, but I think it was more because I think I had a concern about people's lives and wanting to improve people's lives and also basically I think it was passion for justice and when I first heard Michael talk about miscarriages of justice about four years ago and what occurred to me was you know what can be the biggest injustice what can be more than an injustice than an innocent person being wrongly convicted and from then on I guess I was hooked and well I think the work that I've done on innocence projects, working on cases, and also the work that I've been doing administrating the database has taught me so much about criminal law and the justice system itself that, you know, it's not foolproof. False allegations can be made, you know, police investigations can be shoddy, and sometimes even to the extent of feeding people up, forensic evidence can go wrong. And to always have that critical eyes and that skepticism about evidence, about criminal justice process, and you also realize that when these things go wrong, it can actually have very devastating impacts on so not just prisoners themselves, but their families as well, who may be spending decades giving up their entire livelihoods just to campaign for their loved ones, for their loved ones. And I think more so, my experience has taught me that you know there's always something you can do about the causes that you believe in, whether or not it's you know trying to get an innocent person out of prison or helping people with their housing their health care, you know, if you believe in the cause, there's always something you can do, whether you're a first year undergraduate or, you know, don't under, don't un basically just don't underestimate what you can do as a student. And I think that's what pro bono is about, really, to actually channel your skills, your knowledge into a cause that you believe in. And, you know, ordinary people like us, we can do quite extraordinary things. Thank you.